So bear is going to be spayed today. What that means is we take out bear's ovaries and uterus. <laughs> Why do we take the ovaries and uterus out of dogs? Well, because the ovaries secrete estrogen, and estrogen causes the mammary glands to develop. And dogs with ovaries have more incidence, have a higher incidence, not more, have a higher incidence of mammary tumors. So all these little mammary glands, which you know dogs have a bunch, are more prone. What? Sit, bear. That's good. I'm a trainer. Isn't that cute? So mammary glands that under the influence of estrogen have a higher incidence of mammary cancer, breast cancer. So when you spay them, then you're not going to have that incidence. That's a good bear. He goes, poor bear. She goes, well, that's enough of that. And with the ovaries and uterus, um, the ovaries will um, keep producing estrogen and stimulate the uterus to thicken. And that may cause the uterus, after a few years, to actually develop a uterine infection, um, if, especially if they don't get pregnant and have babies. So a uterine infection can turn into what's called a pyometra. And you see that on one of my other videos. It's a big bag of pus in the belly, in the uterus. So that's a bad thing. It can be very critical. The third thing is dogs that have the ovaries and uterus come into heat. And it causes a lot of humpy dogs to come around, male dogs, and bother you and your dog, and also it causes unwanted pregnancies. And uh, we don't need more puppies in the world. There's plenty of them available through shelters. Um, isn't that right there? Here's nervous. So we don't need more puppies. So anyway, those are the major reasons why we neuter. So we're going to show you exactly what goes into uh, spaying or, or doing taking out the ovaries and uterus of a female dog. So the night before, Bear, did you get any dinner last night? Maybe a little dinner, but hopefully you didn't get any breakfast because if you did, you may vomit and you could close off your trachea and we don't want that. So you could have eaten last night, not this morning, and you can drink a lot of little, a little water. Uh, that's not usually a problem because unlike humans who guzzle, uh, dogs just lap up little bits at a time usually and they don't get a whole stomach full of water. So Bear, let's see, why don't we start by giving you a little bit of pre-medication. Does that sound good? And uh, then we, you'll, you'll get calm, which you're pretty calm already. And uh, why don't Bear, I'm just going to give you a quick little once over to make sure everything's okay. So I'm going to listen to your heart. And it's going thump, da dump, da dump, da dump in a real regular beat. Yeah, that's good, Bear. Your weight's really good. Yes, you are. You've kept yourself slim and trim. That's really nice. Your color's really good. Look at the pink color. It means you've got plenty of oxygen going through those little capillaries. Lots of red blood cells. Your nose is nice and wet. It means that you're really well hydrated and your skin goes right back down. Skin turgor means you've got a lot of fluid and moisture all through your body. Your pulse is really good. Yeah, you're getting a good report card. And, and your abdomen. I don't feel any problems or masses. So I think you're ready to go, Bear. What do you think? So a lot of times it's hard to lift animals on the table because we have to lift them on the table so we have a have a good working area and a level at which we could do all our work. So Bear's had the pre-medication and now we're going to give Bear the, the anesthetic. So here's the propofol. Look how white it is. It's like milk. It goes right in the vein, slowly, and then we'll put the trachea tube in so that uh, we can keep the gas going in to bear during the surgery. We, we use the anesthetic, IV anesthetic, to start the anesthesia. And we use the trachea tube to continue the gas anesthesia. 
So it takes two people to usually hold a dog in order to induce anesthesia. I don't want to get in her way, but just to show you the sights and sounds of anesthesia. She's measuring it to make sure it doesn't go down too far. And she knows, and she's putting a gauze around the tongue so she can grab it. A little ointment in the eyes in order to keep him from drying out during the surgery. Putting monitors on her in order to monitor her oxygen and her pulse. If you would take a dog's pulse, there's a hard tube here and you put your fingers on it like that and you can feel it. This monitor will tell us that the oxygen is 96 and the heart rate is 114. So we'll prep her up in this room and then we're going to take her in the other room uh, and surgically or we'll shave her up in this room and then we'll take her in the other room and we'll prep her up. So the, she's prepped up and you can tell we have a wide area. Clear up, here's her start of her ribs. We're going to prep all the way back almost down to the vagina. And the incision is usually right in here. So we want all a wide area so we can get all the bacteria away. So Melissa's bringing a look at what a strong technician she is. She's bringing her in and she's putting her on the table and they're hooking her up to the oxygen. We prepped her in the other room and now we're going to hook her up in this room to the anesthesia machine that mine is adjusting and turning it on. What we actually are doing is keeping her legs out of the way as I make my incisions and do the procedure. Because I guess when you say tie down, it kind of makes you think of torture. We're not torturing her. She's out. She doesn't know any different. So what I do is I don my cap to protect me from getting hair in the wound, which I don't have any, so that's not much of an issue. And we're going to put my mask on, and then I'm going to scrub up. Push my low. Got to push the little metal thing in close to my nose so I don't breathe out and fog up my glasses. So we got to wash our hands really, really good, take all the bacteria off our arms, because you know we have more bacteria on and around us than we do cells in our body. They're our friends, they live with us and protect us from bad bacteria. But if they get into the wounds, our little doggies and kitties might think, not, think they're so friendly. So I'm washing them off really good. Three good scrubs, get my fingernails, get my arms, and making sure all those bacteria are going down the drain. I feel bad, I'm murdering bacteria every day. And then what I do to be extra murderous is I, of all the bacteria, I put an antiseptic on, that a dry, we call it a dry wash, and it takes all the bacteria off my arms. So it's double. Now I'm ready. So let's go in here. This is where I'm going to do the surgery. I'm going to put on my gloves and I'm going to put on my gown. This is the one thing that takes takes some time to put on because you've got to have people help you with it. It feels a little bit like a straight jacket, but it's not. Okay, so I got my gown going on to protect this little girl from the, all the bacteria on my clothes and my body. Whoops. Let me go ahead and push my, pull my gloves here. Some people like to put their gloves on afterwards, so before. But as long as they're on, sometimes you put your gloves on the outside, but I usually do it this way, it's easier. Mine is tying me up. Good. Okay, so now we're going to take the drape, and we're going to drape off all the bacteria. And it's crude. It's a paper drape. Sometimes you have the cloth drapes. It's a paper drape and I wanted to go from the umbilicus clear down to the to the to the pelvis and then I'm gonna clamp them on. Now I'm piercing, skin piercing. We're getting the towel clamps and we're putting them clamping the, the drape to the skin. It's all prepped up. I didn't show the prep, I was negligent in showing that, but we scrub the incision multiple times with antiseptic. Hold your breath, close your eyes, don't look. 
This is the cut. Are you not up nice and close, Melissa? I'm up nice and close. Okay, we're going to cut. See the little tiny? You'd be surprised how little it bleeds when you cut down the middle where the blood vessels are not. So see that big old wound I caused right there? It's not bleed because there's no major blood vessels here. And I didn't film them prepping it because a dog just came in and it had it been playing with another dog and it got poked in the eye, but the, it was fine. I should have filmed that. So here's the, the subcutaneous tissue. Here's the muscle. Here's the middle of the muscle, and that's where we're going to cut. So I'm going to let the subcutaneous tissue go. I'm going to grab right where the middle of the muscle is. I'm going to make a little, and no, I don't use a handle. Um, a lot of people write in and go, what's wrong with you? Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you use a handle? Well, I, mean, I don't feel like using a handle. I don't call you and ask you why you like oatmeal instead of cornflakes. It's my, my surgery. Maybe I don't want a handle. I think I'm sensitive about that. So I'm going to cut Yes, yes, I'm using my scissors, too. But maybe I like to use my scissors. Some people get really testy. There's the, um, there's the covering, the peritoneal uh, lining of the peritoneum. And I'm going to take a little piece of it. So I quite didn't quite cut through. I'm going to nick it. And then I'm going to go in it. And there's the abdomen open. So I'm going to cut down, see there's the opening, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hook, fishing hook, isn't that pretty, and I'm going to go down in the abdomen and fish for the uterus. Why do we call it fish? Well, because we, it's like throwing your line in a pond where you can't see the bottom. So I can't really see the bottom, but I can go in there and fish for things. And I know kind of what I'm looking for because this fat is very creamy. It's more like a creamy, creamy color instead of a red color. And that's always where the uterus is. See the uterus come out? Isn't that pretty? That's the uterus and all the blood vessels. So I'm going to put my finger in there and I'm going to break the, the, the ligament to the ovary. So let's see, look at, look at how hard I have to pull. Push, I mean. That's how hard it is. Look at that. And, and I'm pulling. It's come up a little bit, but it still didn't break. Amazing. You think the body's tough. Oh, there it broke. So now what that lets me do is it lets me isolate the blood vessels to the to the ovary, which is right in here. Here's the ligament between the ovary and the uterus. See, there's the uterus, there's the ovary, and here's the ligament. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to through this window in the omentum onto the uterus and over it. Now I can hold it up really good and I can, there's a little bleeding down here but that'll stop as soon as I tie it off. So we'll just swab it like that. See, little oozers but still not a lot of blood, right? Right, you guys are still doing good, aren't you? Yeah. Nothing like watching a little surgery when right before breakfast. Now we're going to put ligate, ligate the arteries. What that means is we're going to ligate them. We're going to put a suture around the arteries and veins to the ovary. Why that's important is because if we don't tie these off, then they'll bleed and that's bad. We want to... Did you get that? 
so I, I put the needle in through the middle of that ovarian ligament and I'm tying off the ovarian arteries and veins right now and I'm suturing I'm got four ties they're square knots and you're thinking you're thinking wow isn't there a lot of bleeding there no that's oozing that's okay so far so good so I'm going to bring the suture around this side now because we're going to tie it off that side and if we put it right through, it's called transfixing. And I'm going to go ahead and do the knot, the three throws on my instrument. And that way if you transfix it, it won't slip. If you put the suture, or if you put the needle through, that area it won't slip and we don't want it to slip so there's four throws there we call them throws there's four square knots is your arm getting sore Melissa <laughs> you can you can rest if you want let's see let me just do this and we'll do this on each side we might not show both sides because it gets boring after a while right so much blood and guts so here's we're tying it off again as tight as we can. Two, three, four, really tight. And then we're gonna cut close to the knot because the more suture material in, the more reaction. And then I'm going to lay my suture down there. And I'm going to cut. Now I'm gonna cut the the ovary away from the from the the the, lick, the the ovarian ligament I tied off and you can see there's the tie there's the suture see there's not much bleeding now but in order to make sure we've done a good job we're going to put a clamp down into the ligament and we're going to let it go now if I didn't tie off like I should have there'd be spurting psh, 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 but there's not so that's good so now we're going to pull out the other side and we're looking down in there another thing you can look down in there look down in there Melissa see there's no bleeding Okay, so let's go for the other one. Let's see if we can pull it up. Oh my gosh, that's tight. Wow. That's a tight one, isn't it? Well, let's see if I can reach down there and feel anything. I'm going to stretch that ligament and slowly pull it up. That one broke a little easier. See that little white spot? That's the ligament. It's coming up. See? And then what I'm going to do is I'm making my little hole in the my window so I can tie off the ovary and on this one I'm gonna clamp just a little sooner and I'm gonna that way I can kind of pull we don't want to pull so much to where we pull the the, the ovary away from its blood vessels but we want to loosen it up so we can get a good tie. This is this is these um, surgeries where they're big dogs and there's a lot of fat. It's a, it's not an easy it's not a it's not a simple surgery. Um, I can feel the I can feel the ovary right in there, and I'll show you on the other one. But you can kind of see. Well, you can't see it, but the ovary is right. See that little, see there's fat, and then see that little bean? Right there, there's the ovary. So if I tie down here below it, I know I'm below the ovary. If I tie down there below the ovary, I know I'm below the ovary. I'm sorry, that was stupid. Is it recording? <laughs> Duh, huh? It's hard for you to see. It's actually hard for me to see, too, because... 
sometimes you're doing surgery and I know what I'm doing but you can't see too well because everything's kind of all the fat and the tightness of the ligaments uh, obscure everything. Now as I look down in there see I look down and there's no bleeding there there's no bleeding there. A little oozing down in there. See that little area right there oozing just a little? But that means that my ties were good. And then um, I'm going to take this. This is the broad ligament. Let's look at how broad it is. And I'm sometimes we tie it off and sometimes we just we just um, let it we kind of pull it apart. It's got very tiny vessels in it. And you might see a little bleeding, but it'll stop immediately. And uh, you just kind of see how window-like it is? Look at it, how window. There's my finger. Here's the, look at, look at the cervix. See the bulge there? And then here's the body of the uterus and the uterine horns. They call them horns because they're like horns of a sheep or a goat. We'll make it look like that. See? Not too much bleeding yet, right? Right, you're thinking, wow, I could do that. Well, you can if you have two assistants and several thousand dollars worth of equipment and a dedicated room and years of training. It's easy. It's not always easy. This was not an easy one. But we're gonna, uh, one, two, three. It disappeared, isn't that cute? Come back, come back. There you are. Tries to hide. So, here's nice and tight. See how tight I pulled that? Ooh. Look at tight. Three, four. Come on, doctor. Put five just to keep, make sure. And then I'm, see how it pinches off everything? This is called a ligature. You want it to be very tight because you don't want it to bleed. If it bleeds then and you've closed up everything, then it can cause problems. I've had them. I've had uh, dogs bleed and, and have problems and it's there's not a worse feeling in the world. So we all try to do our best to make that not happen. So there's a double tie on that, and then, now, guess what? All the uterus goes away. Bye, uterus and ovaries. We're gonna put you down here, and uh, then we're gonna look, check this for bleeders, but I don't really have to clamp it too much. You see that little ooze? That, little, that was blood pressure under, but watch it. See it move? That's the uterine arteries pulsing. Going, oh darn, we're in a cul-de-sac now. We're no longer go clear down. So I'm gonna put it back where it belongs. There's still no bleeding. So now I'm going to suture the muscle together. Suturing the muscle together is uh, a lot different than a ligature. It um, take the muscle, there's the muscle. There's the muscle. This is the sub Q. I'm gonna put it a few millimeters away from the muscle edge. So I gotta lift up the sub Q. Look at that. I gotta find the muscle down there and I gotta put it a few millimeters away from the muscle edge. And then I have to pull the suture through. And we're gonna do three ties like we do on the uterus. But the difference is on this one, we only go that much. I mean, I'm not going to tighten it because those little blood vessels that are holding and going through the muscle, they don't want to be squished because if they get squished, they don't surface the muscle and it could cause the muscle to die and we want them to live. These sutures are just holding, they hold everything close together so they can heal and unbelievably in four or five days, there's already enough scar tissue to really hold it together. So again, I'm going away from the edge of the muscle. One, two, three. Just 
and I'll show you on the next one, I'll place it a little more carefully. I mean, show you how little tension I put on it. And so I clamp it here, lift the sub cue away, find the muscle, go through the muscle, go through the muscle on this side, and there's a little bit more red muscle than sometimes I'll see if I cut right through the, the line between them, there sometimes there's hardly any um, redness to the muscle, but it's okay, it all heals well. One, two, three, now watch, watch. I'm gonna just pull and lay it down. And I'm gonna tighten it. See, it tightens up a little bit anyway, and that will really hold that together. Cut that, and that one's a little too long. Don't. The more suture material you have in there, the more reaction. So we try to kind of keep it down. Now this is a sub Q stitch. Watch this. And the sub Q down here, and up, going up like an arrow in the sky, going up, and then back down. The arrow comes back down and goes to the other side. And then we're gonna. This is a great holding stitch. This is probably a better, as far as holding, oh, look at that suture trying to stick out. The, uh, this is a better holding stitch. Well, this is the better holding stitch in outside sutures. In, in a, you see in outside sutures, when you have surgery, this stitch is better in holding all the tissues together. Because you saw me hold the very bottom and and then the sides, and it brings everything together and eliminates the space we've caused. So, we're gonna do that again and again. And you can see where this would hold the muscles together too. It would hold the muscles together, and it would hold, and it holds the skin together. So, I'm bringing up the edge of the skin a few millimeters away from the other one. See, I put it up. Now, this one I didn't put down through the body. Yeah, I'm going to do that every other one or every third one. And then I'm going to put it in the skin again. You can see there's more oozing here than there was in the surgery in the, in the um, abdomen. Look at that. There's more blood, but that's okay. It's just sometimes tissues ooze. The skin's got a lot of blood vessels. So we're going to tie this together. Kind of do over and over again, and then the last one go down. Get a little bit of the sub Q. Didn't come through the skin. That's good. Up. We're not going to go down the body this time because we don't need on this one. We're going to go down here and go go out. So see, it kind of. It ties it at the bottom. So three throws. And then we we got to cut these real tight close because we don't want those little ends sticking out. So we don't want to cut the knot, but we want to make sure that. So we're gonna do that and then. Look and see if there's any others that need to be shortened up. Sometimes I won't put skin sutures in, but this this dog's an active dog, so I'm going to go ahead and put some skin sutures in so they go across the skin, not into the sub Q. It's just uh, those are just sutures that are. And then one, two, three. And this one just laid across, barely even even looser than than the the muscle, because we the skin definitely you don't need you just need it to hold it together. You don't need any tightness because it's got all those other sutures. It's just a safety thing. Okay, so so we're gonna do that all the way across. I got appointments, so I'm gonna have to quit filming. 
you can see, uh, put all the sutures in, there's a little oozing. Uh, we cleaned up the wounds, got the table all nice and clean. Still, uh, she's, we took the anesthetic tube out and she's waking up, check for color, nice and pink. So it means there's no bleeding inside. So you see she's starting to, starting to blink a little bit. And we usually leave the tube until she swallows. See if her eyeball's in it. Her eyeball's still down. See the, the straight down. In there somewhere. Well, we, we didn't get to see the tube taken out, but you can see that Bear's looking around now. This is just probably only a few minutes after, oh, 20 minutes after I stopped the surgery. But she's looking around, she's a little bit, a little bit disoriented. She's going, where am I, where am I, where am I? Let's see, I'll crawl this way. Yeah, maybe we'll crawl that way. And, uh, So she's kind of whining, but sometimes the whining isn't so much uh, pain. It's just disoriented. They don't understand what's happened. I know, Bear. She got a shot of a Remedil for pain. Uh, it's an anti-inflammatory. And uh, she got the preoperative hydromorphone. So that helps with pain too. We spay and neuter dogs so that they we won't have a deluge of new puppies we don't need, um, and also to prevent breast cancer in female dogs and in male dogs uh, to decrease the chance that we'll have unwanted puppies and decrease prostate uh, cancer a bit. In male dogs, it's not as clear that it's as helpful as it is in females, but in females, you definitely don't want them going through their first heat because that increases the chance of breast cancer. In male dogs, uh, leaving them intact for over a year uh, tends to strengthen up their muscles and ligaments, and maybe it's not such a bad thing. Well, I hope you got another look at the, the neuter process, the ovarian hysterectomy, or the OVH. I just wanted to show you different aspects of it. I've shown it before, but kind of explained it the, before we did it and a little bit differently how we tie off those ovarian vessels. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I just thought to myself, well, there's different videos you can see that will show different aspects of the same procedure. So if you get a chance, go to Dog Dish Diet. Um, I have a new book coming out in just a month. This is April of 2016 in May. It's called the Dog Diet Answer Book, and it's an updated version of the Dog Dish Diet, and it will tell you a lot more information. And as you know, and as we all learn and change, I've learned a lot of stuff since I started this quest to make sure animals eat the right diets for 10 years. Um, so this book has a little bit better information, updated information, and I think you'll enjoy it. So go right to dogdishdiet.com and you can take a look at the, the book. And there's also the other two, which is Dog Dish Diet and Feed Your Pet to Avoid the Vet. And I'm really into this uh, not only to sell books, which yeah, everybody likes to do that, but what I've really wanted to do is to make sure that our pets get the best diet they can and to avoid all kinds of chronic problems when you feed them a better ingredients. You want to avoid wheat. And most dogs, and even beef and chicken in some. Well, have a great day.